Chris Felica, the bear from College Game Day, in town to speak to the Northwest Arkansas Touchdown Club, and we're having some fun with them. One of the things we did is we put together a coach board. Uh, Chris, here's what happens in college football. You know this, and you do all these picks on College Game Day related to games. But in college football, the fan bases all talk about the coach. In the NFL, there's a lot of players, yep. franchise players, franchise tags, all that. But in college football, it's like there's nothing else going on in the program. It's just, <laughs> is the coach doing a good job or not? And so this isn't a hot seat board, oh. as you can tell, because Urban Meyer and, and Jim Harbaugh are nowhere, Dabo Sweeney, nowhere near the hot seat, and some of these other guys. But if you were just picking, if there was just a matchup of coaches, like the matchup's even, and you're going to take a coach. So it's, the matchup's pretty even. These are pick'em games or whatever. Which coach are you giving the edge to on the way that we've matched them up? Uh, here you got two guys who have always seemed to find ways to – lose a lot of close games and games that they should have won. I will say only I'll go I'll go I'll go with all breath because he's gotten to the Rose Bowl before. Granted it was obviously Wisconsin. Right. But his teams have always played hard. It, it, this place is a complete mess right now. Who knows what direction their season's gonna go. I'll be curious to see what happens on Saturday because it's so obvious Georgia is the better team. They're gonna blow them out. It's so obvious that it's a near certainty that there'll be an upset or a close game. I was gonna ask you who wins the press conference, but maybe maybe the better <laughs> question is whose comments go viral from the press because Butch right, Jones right, is like right he's there. on a run. Chad, uh, Chad, he's, he's on a five-star yes, absolutely. He is on a serious oh, run right now. All right, Derek Mason and uh, Mark Stoops, which I, I, Kentucky's, uh, he's done a pretty good job. They've both done a really good job this year. Vandy's starting 3-0. and God, I feel bad for him. Yeah, that third down. A couple, yeah, couple that of those fourth down plays. Yeah. Two breakdowns. Uh, this is a hard one because I, re- I know Mark and I like Mark a lot. Uh, but I, I, I would have to go with Derek Mason. You talk nationally, the, his mind, as a defensive mind, he's – probably up there with the top two or three defensive minds in the country in terms of respect yeah, from uh, opposing coaches. And he's got so much less to work with at Vandy than Mark does at Kentucky. I'll, I'll give a slight edge to Derek, but I love Mark too. These two are, it's always gonna be fun. You got Michigan and Ohio State, Urban Meyer and Jim Harbaugh. Even match game, who gets the edge in coaching? I'm gonna go here. And I know that might not be the popular choice because he's won a couple of national titles and, and he hasn't, but. They have found ways to lose games lately that they shouldn't. They have played some eggs. Their offense has struggled. He's had trouble getting some continuity on his offensive staff and playing well. The Barrett situation's weird. Embarrassed in the playoff last year. Yeah, they pulled some upset, but the the motivation and the psychology behind him, everything that he does has a purpose, whether it's the glasses, the press conference, going to Italy, whatever it is. He has raised the bar at this school from here to here. He's a god. He can do no wrong. And next year, they're not out of it this year. But next year, you watch out for that team. I, I love Jim Harbaugh. Interesting. Um, Jimbo Fisher, rough start. Dad was when he won the national championship last year. It's interesting how these things change over the years, exactly. too, right? But uh, which, which way are you going here? Even matchup. Two of the four active active coaches that have won national championships. I mean, both uber successful. I mean, I got to go back since I believe it's since Dabo became the head coach of Clemson. I think Alabama is the only school in the country that has a better winning percentage. I mean, he's he's won he's beaten Jimbo the last couple of years. Again, I'll have to go here, but it's hard to argue with what he's done and putting guys in the NFL and and winning the national championship as well. But. But Dabo, two straight years in the championship game, defending champs, and looking like they're headed back for a third straight trip. And it just goes to show you, he's getting some criticism right he now. Is, especially and with just, his assistant coach. Yeah, and, are, and, and not that long ago, you know, nobody's talk, has anything bad to say about it. It's just the way it goes. crush him on that, though. His yeah. quarterback got hurt the first game right. of the year. You play Alabama, and then you, you play an NC State team that what, outgained South Carolina by a couple hundred yards in the opener, and they're better than what their record indicated. Ed Orgeron. <laughs> We're not sure what to think. Uh, our punter is Josh uh, and Kevin Sumlin, and you know I don't. I mean, you know, I think Sumlin, if he had his career played in Arlington in Cowboy <laughs> Stadium, and he was playing Arkansas, he, or Hall of Fame coach, or Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl that one year as yes. well. I mean, that he just loves that building. He's had success as a head coach, whether it was at Houston. And even granted his success at AM, a lot of it was with Johnny. But 
he's a really good offensive mind, and I don't know what's going on there right now, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Summy just just because he's proven as a head coach. He's what nine and twenty-five or whatever it is now as as an SEC head coach, and the direction of that program, I'd be. I'd be careful there. We're still trying to figure out if we can get interim off of that guy. <laughs> we know he's a good interim coach. Now, maybe that's what they should have done. Just labeled him interim right. until we hire the next coach. <laughs> indefinite be, head coach. Yeah, he could be the indefinite head coach. Um, okay, Sawyer Rattler, our production director, put this together. He did a great job. Now, this was just kind of unfair. Um, we got motorcycles versus cell phones. <laughs> well, and, and these guys, I mean, they got, if we could talk about this today, but nobody's going to know <laughs> we talked about this today. Uh, because this guy's a, uh, you need to put a different face on that for the, for the moment with the, the Patino, not Petrino. But uh, if you, let's just go back to their career for a second. If they're both coaching as coaches, it's an even matchup, their teams, who gets the coach edge? It, it, it's here. Yeah. You may have your opinion of this guy as a person, as as a man, but taking Louisville to the to the to the to the BCS at Arkansas in the in the Sugar Bowl had Louisville nearly again close to the to the playoff last year. He's a great coach. I mean, obviously, you was beating Arkansas a couple of times. I mean, uh, Alabama a couple of times. But yeah, I, I have to go. I have to go with Bobby right now. I'll, I'll, I don't think I'll, I'll be dialing all. Uh, I'll, I'll use. I won't text him any numbers anytime. <laughs> I like it too. Is uh, there's still an unaccounted burner phone in Yuma, Arizona? We're trying to find. It's the bear, Chris Felica, with us in studio.